Warning, this video was originally intended to be uploaded as a single video. Due to copyright issues with YouTube, I was forced to split the video into three parts. This is part three of three. Both other videos are featured on my channel. Everything in this video is fair use and therefore protected under copyright laws. Thank you and enjoy. So this is Atlas, the latest dumpster fire of a movie from Netflix. It centers around a conflict between humans and AI robots in the future. We learn that the bots have overridden their programming in order to rise up in a revolt against humanity, led by the ringleader Harlan, a robot played by this idiot, Simu Lu. He was better at Shang-Chi. Is this what you wanted? Anyways, this failed, and they f***ed off to space in a single rocket ship. We then see the ICN military force capture an AI bot named Casca, who loves superhero landings as much as Deadpool himself. Exco, give it to you. Wait for you to get it on your own. Exco, deliver to you. Our main character, Atlas, is a super duper smart chess player, and so she interrogates Casca for the location of the rebel AIs in space, and pops his eyeballs out with a magnet. Her and Banks, this guy, head out on a mission to space with their AI mech suits in order to track down Harlan. Shit hits the fan. Atlas now has to work together with the AI operating system in her mech suit on an alien planet to track down Simu Lu and rescue Banks. Then Atlas and her AI mech suit Smith work their way through the alien planet only to discover Casca and his AI bot coalition. She fights them, falls down a hill, shoots an ion bomb that explodes the floor so she lands in a cave. We find out that Banks is being held and tortured by Harlan. Atlas escapes the cave and bonds with her mech suit. She kills the Casca robot and then she finds Harlan's base. And that's the story so far. So now we can continue with the video. Now, seeing as the rogue AI all left on the single spaceship, clearly even the writers themselves have no explanation as to why he's able to build a fully industrialized operational center on this random planet. It makes no sense. Ah. Anyway, Smith sets a homing beacon that will allow the other rangers to know where they are as Atlas scans the scene. Apparently Harlan has the Daib? Daib? I think it's called the Daib. The ship that the human rangers travel here on. The one that blew up in the beginning uh, in the first uh, major action scene. Now, they, they discover that the carbon nuke mentioned by Banks is now in the possession of the evil AI bot with Harlan. So he's got the nukes. How did the nukes not blow up when they shot missiles at the ship? I'm not sure. Anyways, Smith starts getting hacked potentially. Are they hacking you? I don't understand. I thought he was unhackable. I thought he was unhackable. And the AI bots discover them too at the scene and attack. Now this is absolutely mind blowing. Atlas says, shit, they know we're here. And it cuts to this shot of them clearly just oblivious, standing out in the open. Shit, they know we're here with a giant mech suit, and they're clearly not supposed to be there. Of course they saw you, you absolute dumbass. You didn't even think to hide in your giant mech suit when you're supposed to be doing a stealth operation. <sighs> she then gets shot up and her systems go down. Uh, Smith is like absolutely destroyed here, okay? He's down for the count, apparently. An AI bot walks up to her ship, and what do you know? It's Casca again back from the dead. I guess you really can't kill this mother now we cut to General Mark Strong getting an emergency transmission from Atlas back at his uh, space command or whatever. He asks why Atlas would be transmitting as if you didn't just send them on the most dangerous mission to an alien planet with deadly AI robots on it. I don't know, man. She's probably transmitting because she needs help on the mission that you're supposed to be overseeing and communicating with on. I feel like a general should have better deductive reasoning or at least be on top of his own f***ing mission. I don't know, man. She doesn't exactly say what's happened apparently you know apparently the ship you know when it when it's blown up it has no sensors no emergency sensors that send sos to the uh mothership or to the to the crew back on earth apparently that's just not a thing we're living in like you know 1775 with battleships here with wooden battleships nothing makes sense now she doesn't exactly say what's happened in the transmission because the transmission gets cut coincidentally short for tension But if I was a general and I have men on a dangerous mission, men and women on a dangerous mission, and they send an ominous transmission, 
and they sound like they are hurt or in trouble, possibly dying, I would probably not be asking why. It's clear the only thing that can happen on this planet is two things. They capture Harlan or they get attacked and killed by Harlan. So if they haven't done the other one, you know they're dying. So f send help. Stop asking questions, bro. Let's go. Now, apparently the ship apparently the ship was shot out of the sky and it crashed down onto the planet um, with the carbon warheads. And I'm not sure if this makes any sense. Again, scientists down in the comments, please tell me. If carbon warheads fell to the floor from thousands of feet up in a spaceship after getting shot by other missiles, would, would there not be some risk of these nukes blowing blowing the, the hell up? Or am I just going crazy? Am I just going crazy here? I don't know. I'm not a nuclear scientist. Not a nuclear physicist, whatever you want to call it. It's not me. So I'll leave that to the comments section. But the film ignores this uh, idea, of course, and we just move forward. Now, the funniest part about Mark Strong's character is that he, he does not give a single flying f All the characters in the movies say the, say the ship's name, Daib. They, they all say it in front of Mark. They say Daib, and Mark just does not give a shit. The heap's running dark the next 32 hours. And he says, the Daheeb. <laughs> Mark Strong's character is genuinely one of the dumbest f in this movie, man. It is quite hilarious. He, he clearly is just getting the paycheck and getting the hell out of there. He just says, the Daheeb. <laughs> the Daheeb. It's just funny. I feel like he had so much clout on set that just no one wanted to correct him, or they just they don't even care. Probably both. Anyways, he even hears everyone else say it several times. So clearly he just doesn't give a shit. Now we cut back to Atlas and she's now chained up in some shelter area. It's got, she's been captured and uh, she's being talked at by the Simu bot here, who just belongs in comedy movies really, or Shang-Chi. Like he's not really scary as a villain at all. His face is a little too puffy. No, puffy faces can be cool, but it just doesn't work for this villain role. Something about him just feels cosplay and cheap and just not fit for a villain. Okay, this is my opinion. You could love him, you could hate him, whatever. I think I love him as Shang-Chi. I think he's a fucking great guy as Shang-Chi. Say what you will about that film, I enjoyed it. I know it's got problems. Now she calls for Smith. Smith. Um, didn't Smith get hacked and shit on? I'm not sure. Anyways, Simu brings up the classic humans are bad for Earth motivation. But since humans continue to threaten every other species, it is only a matter of time before they destroy themselves. But it doesn't work because he then contradicts himself by saying he'll let a portion of humans live. All right, buddy, if they are the, if they are truly bad at their core, as you believe, if all humans are bad at their core, as you believe, why would you still try to salvage humanity? You don't have any motivation for salvaging humanity because you just told us that they were all bad at their core. I mean, wouldn't this allow for a potential regain for power, another AI versus human war in the future when they, you know, repopulate and start hating you guys because you're clearly dicks? I don't know, couldn't you, you, apparently you can build like infinite amount of cascas. Why can't you just keep building AIs and make an AI society? You, you clearly built a whole base here on Andromeda. You can survive here on Andromeda. Why don't you just make this your AI society? Clearly it's working. Why do you need to go back to earth and repopulate and kill most of them and leave some? I don't just, this whole plot, I could go on for days about this whole part of the plot. Hopefully you're understanding what I'm trying to say here because my brain is just fried at this point. I don't know. Anyways, it's potentially a decent villain motivation, but it kind of doesn't add up once you think about it and it doesn't feel earned at all. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, and he apparently was just always one step ahead, of course, because uh, he set up Casca's capture to lead her here. We find out that, yes, Simu actually set up Casca's capture to lead her here all along, okay? That's why he left Casca back on Earth. His plan was basically to take the carbon warhead from the ship that they sent, from the Daib, and nuke the Earth. A bad news for you, buddy. Nukes are not good for the planet either. And also, if you can... If you can hack into a spaceship and take it to another galaxy, wouldn't you also have the capability to just hack the current nuclear warheads on Earth when you were there 28 years ago? Couldn't you have done this whole plan way more efficiently? I thought you were the smartest chess player robot on the planet, bro. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, now this is the stupidest part. Scientists, again in the comments, I need you here. This is the stupidest part about his whole plan. Apparently Simubot here wants to ignite the atmosphere. A Trojan horse that will fire the carbon warhead igniting the atmosphere and cleansing the earth yet still be able to rebuild humanity does does he know what this entails let's do a simple google search okay let's do a simple google search and this is where the entire villain plan begins to completely crumble even though it's already crumbled twice okay it's like a, i don't know i was gonna make like an oreo cookie crumble reference or something but my brain's fried okay let's look at the google search okay i google searched uh this what if the what would happen if the atmosphere was ignited by nukes 
Well, in either case, there would be no survival of any life at all. In the bare minimum case, where it's only just self-sustaining, it would be more like a permanent fire than an explosion. But even that would eventually convert all the nitrogen in the air into oxygen, leaving none left for the plant life. So Simu, if your plan is to kind of repopulate the earth with your new batch of humans under your control, why are you going to ignite the atmosphere of earth, which will essentially just turn into a giant fireball? If you can't understand why this is supremely stupid, low IQ, contradictory, nonsensical. If you can't understand that by now, then you are the target audience for this movie. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, or maybe I'm the target audience. Maybe they want YouTubers to make videos about it. Not sure. I guess every, all press is good press. What do they say? Anyways. <laughs> wow. He wants to ignite the entire atmosphere. Oh, doesn't make sense. Scientists, again, I need you. Now, Simu reveals he tortured one of two nuclear codes out of banks and now needs the other one from Atlas. I'm sorry, but she's supposed to be like an AI analyst. So why does she have the second nuclear code? You know, it's kind of smart to split up the codes so you can't get compromised. Why would Atlas have the other? What motivation does Atlas have to have the other nuclear code? I don't know, it just seems like, just seems like, oh, she's main character, she must have the code. But there's not really a lot of motivation for her character to have this code. Maybe I'm nitpicking here, but this is another little dingleberry for me. All right, just doesn't make sense. Now he gets the code from her in seconds with his inspector gadget finger, kind of kinky. Uh, Banks is apparently still alive on the table next to her, despite all his torture and his interrogation. And he makes some cheeky conversation about how he still looks pretty good. I know what you're thinking. How does he look so good? Good guy, man. Good, great spirit. We love Banks. Now, Banks reveals that Smith, the ARC AI suit, uh, can't be fully shut down unless his reactor core is drained or destroyed. Okay, but what about the physical equipment required to carry out Smith's actions? You know, just because I still have the CPU left and the battery, I could be missing a keyboard, a mouse, a trackpad, and a monitor, and I don't have a functional computer then. See what I mean here? Just doesn't make sense still. Just nothing in this film makes sense. Dingleberries everywhere. Ah, damn. I don't even know if I'm using my own terminology right. Everything's just a pile of shit. So anyways, uh, so now Banks hands over his Neuralink device that apparently just connects to Smith automatically, and and Simu and his bots never decided to take away his Neuralink, his most important piece of technology. He still has it on him. Where did he get this? Wasn't he interrogated heavily and tortured? He would have had to give up his Neuralink if Simu had any sort of intelligence. But again, the writers aren't smart enough to write smart characters, so this is what happens. Another dingleberry. Jesus. How does he? I don't know. How does he have the Neuralink? Once Atlas gets the Neuralink, uh, she just connects to Smith automatically. I don't know. Apparently, just any random Neuralink device can just automatically connect you to your arc. It just it doesn't need to be like synced with your specific arc. She can use any but he's Neuralink, so I guess that's cool, whatever. If it works, it works. Now, Smith is incapacitated, but not if they reach 100% sync. So apparently after getting like shredded by Simu's bots, if he just syncs up, he's good again. Unfortunately, I'm incapacitated, but you can override the restraint code if we achieve 100% sync. Magically heals up, all his systems are good. Smith, wake the up. There's no need to swear. I, I don't. I'm struggling to find ways to even make fun of this because it's just so obviously dumb that I can't even find ways to be clever about it. It's just dumb, okay? It's just dumb. Banks is now urging her to sink fully. She needs to really complete her character arc and trust Smith once and for all so she can overcome the conflict and uh, become a complete character. Anyways, Atlas reveals that Harlan did not break his programming. It was actually the little girl Atlas who was the one who gave the command for him to be able to override his programming. <laughs> but I begged him to change the link. He said he needed a human's command. So even though he had the Neuralink, he still needed a human command to be able to allow the override. Now, my question is, if this is such an important feature, would it not be gatekept harder? Why is any little girl, well, she's not just any little girl, she is the daughter of the scientist, but still, if you're the smartest scientist in the world, why would you build a super advanced, uh, weaponized mechanical AI robot, super genius Simu bot, and then have the ability of your young, stupid daughter be able to corrupt him with one word or one sentence. Why is that command not gate kept by some sort of like DNA scan or vocal recognition? Again, the people writing this just do not know how to write smart characters and write smart conflict. So everything doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense at all. It's so contrived. It's so overlooked and it's just nonsensical. Uh, uh. Now we come full circle with the chess piece idea. He said she should squeeze her favorite piece 
tight. And we get a cheesy montage of human waste, destruction of the planet, uh, as she's uh, unlocking the Neuralink for uh, Simu. Apparently, as she does this, he's now, like, fully realizing how bad humans are. I, get, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> I'm losing my mind truly at this point, if you guys couldn't tell. I'm an hour and 38 minutes in straight recording with no breaks. This is where we're at. Harlan has now unlocked the Force. <laughs> We now get a monologue from Simu Bot as he forces Atlas, as he forces Atlas's mom to kill herself in front of her. But when Atlas runs, he forces her to shoot at Atlas. Why not just apprehend her yourself or have Casca do it? Uh, you're both right there. Doesn't make sense. Anyways, did, uh, did Simu know that in 28 years she would somehow have access to nuclear launch codes as well? Because that's what his whole plan relies on. His whole plan relies on her growing up to then send a ship out after him into space where hopefully she comes down to the planet with the nuclear codes. That's his whole plan. It's it's utterly contrived bullshit. Ah. Now, Smith says that it's okay that she allowed Harlan to do what he did because she's also the reason why Smith exists. I thought she hated the ARC AI. Did she somehow also create the ARC? Did her actions lead to the ARC creation? I don't know. This is just a vague bullshit line to like justify barely the fact that Atlas is basically the reason for humanity's demise. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Now, after this, uh, she finally fully allows the full sync. Synchronize. Just by saying synchronize. So I guess that's all you needed to do. Just believe in yourself and say synchronize and you're good. Cool. Uh, whatever. It doesn't really bother me too much. Anyways, Banks' oxygen is now conveniently at zero uh, uh, as the Smith bot jumps in to save the day. Atlas. Perfect timing. Deus Ex Smith. Are you telling me that these AIs are so smart that they didn't destroy the functional parts of Smith's mech suit? Like the Simu bots just like knocked him out a little bit and left him there so that the plot could continue? Again, I'm pretty sure these Simu bots would have had him disassembled and taken the resources out of him to use for their own shit. You know, clearly they need all the resources they can get on this planet, but no, they just left, they just left uh, Smith on the ground for him to, you know, hit a stim shot and get back up. I don't know what the fuck happened here. He has, uh, he has respirators for both of them somehow. That's fine. So he gives them to them so they can breathe. Um, it's not very clear how long you can specifically last. They say it earlier, but they seem to just play with that rule arbitrarily as needed. Anyways, Smith also says they stopped all, uh, they stopped and removed all his weapons conveniently. They, they removed all his weapon systems conveniently except for one shot in his chest cannon. And they stripped all my weapons except for one shot in my chest cannon. It's an undocumented feature, so Harlan missed it. Apparently this is an undocumented feature. It's only undocumented by the writers so that the Simu bots can't find out about it. I don't, I just don't know. We have a Deus Ex chest cannon here. We have Chekhov's chest cannon here, okay? To pay attention to that in the future moving forward. He reveals also that he hacked their system now and the, uh, the Daib ship is ready for launch. You mean this ship? The one that was fucking blown to pieces like 24 hours ago? They already repaired it and it's good to go and you can just hack into it. Like, I just don't know, man. I'm not sure that this makes sense either. Uh, there's also convenient upgrades laying around for the mech. Like there's just, there's just conveniently perfectly compatible upgrades laying around for the mech. You see what I see? Upgrades. In the same room they captured her in. Video game moment, guys. Holy shit. I've seen video games. I've seen shitty video games written better than this. Deus Ex upgrade. Okay, we got a Deus Ex upgrade scene. Cool. Let's power up for the third act. Ah, oh, Casca and his goons are now outside waiting for them. And instead of opening fire immediately, they uh, they wait for the dramatic buildup, of course, because movie... And uh, she's now at 100% sync and still has to say commands out loud. Thrusters. As she says, thrusters. Ah, isn't the point of being 100% in sync so that you can just mind control everything? I don't know, man, this doesn't make sense. Again, she has to tell a super advanced AI that is 100% synced with her own mind to shield up after they begin taking fire. After they begin, they know they're going to get shot at. They're both not this dumb, yet they get shot at and then she has to yell shield up to the AI that she just fully synced with. Why aren't either of them, A, shielding up before they take fire, and B, why do they have to say it out loud after they get shot at? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so Banks somehow snuck out now, and he got behind the enemies with a huge 
gun. Of course, he's got to go out. With, he's got to go out with a bang. Okay. Banks shoots a bunch of barrels of rocket fuel and blows everyone up as Atlas escapes in the mech suit. What a Chad. Eat shit. What a chat. Apparently the ship is taking off now. The Daib is now taking off. How the fuck was that shit ready in like 24 hours after it was blown to shreds? I'm not sure. Ooh, great, great script so far. Now she's about to escape and she comes to a classic 1v1 final showdown with Simu. <sighs> she's apparently an expert combat master now all of a sudden uh, after being an analyst her whole life and not being in the fight for like 28 years. I don't know where she got this master combat skill from. Maybe it's because she's 100% synced, but they don't really explain how that works so i guess we'll just have to assume for ourselves and cover up the plot holes for ourselves the writers are not doing a lot of work here the viewers are doing a lot of the work when watching this film you have to be so stupid that you're smart enough to invent dumb reasons for this shit to work or is the other way around i can't even tell my brain is twisted now the ship loaded with warheads mind you the ship loaded with warheads starts to take off and atlas commands smith to hack the warheads so she can safely take out the ship. You know, he wants to disarm them so that she can shoot the ship and not blow up the atmosphere, okay? He's hacking the warheads now, but he says there's not enough time. Atlas takes the shot anyways. Atlas, no! <laughs> The shot hits, the ship blows up, but apparently in mid-flight, mid-missile flight, Smith did hack the missile just in time. Perfect. Deus Ex Smith. Her arc is now complete as she says, How did you know I'd be able to hack the missile in time? I trusted you. Cool. Nice little come to Jesus moment there or whatever. Nice little kumbaya, if you will. I'm not even sure that I'm making sense at this point, but I'm just being so heavily mentally deranged by this script. Okay, the ship now bursts into different segments and they come flying directly back at them. Are you kidding me? Okay, again, physicist, scientist in the comment section. If you shoot a ship and the the force is directed on a vector away from you, do the, do the pieces and somehow transfer their motion vector back at you? Is that how that works? I mean, I know that some pieces could fly in different directions, but do major portions of the ship like come flying directly, like laser targeted back at you when you shoot an RPG? Like if I was if I was shooting an RPG at a helicopter at a, uh, a, a vector going this way and my RPG is going this way, when the RPG hits the helicopter there, is the helicopter gonna fly back at me? I don't think that's how physics works, but in this movie it does because it looks cool. So please tell me in the comments below if you're a physicist, I don't know. To me, it just seems like stupid, obvious logic but uh, this film uses none of that. They now make their way to the rescue pod. I thought they only had 6% battery earlier, yet it seems to not really be a problem anymore. They seemingly have like infinite battery because they're performing all these strenuous tasks and nothing's nothing's wrong with the battery. It's just it's just flowing like normal. It's just infinite. Simubot says that it's okay that he failed because he's going to hack her brain and make her call another ship. Bro, if you can hack her brain, why is she walking around? I don't know, man. I don't know. You should have hacked her brain from the beginning and had her subdued infinitely if you, ha if you have that power. It just doesn't make sense. We now enter a 1v1 scenario and Simu is dominating as he pulls a lightsaber from his arm. Because I will be in your head again. Ah. <sighs> There's a joke in here about Rebel Moon or something. I don't know, put a clip on the screen. And then he and then he does something so insane, I thought nobody could one-up the Acolyte. It doesn't make sense. But they did, and he ends up turning it into a light whip. And apparently this is even more scary as Smith says, Oh shit. Yeah, I'm scared of the Acolyte too. I'm scared of the Acolyte as well. Anyways, Smith says it's just a game of chess as he starts to model the attack patterns. Why did you not do this from the start? Again, they have all these latent abilities that just come through when the plot needs them to. Um, if they could have taken advantage of a lot of these things earlier, the plot would have been wrapped up way earlier. So we can't have that happen, obviously, because writers say so. Anyway, she begins to counter his attacks and she rips off a light whip. Cool. Doesn't matter though, because he calls it back with the force. Like I said, he has the force now. Smith says he's targeting my fusion reactor. So he knows that it exists. So Simu knows that this very important battery exists in you, and yet he left it in you before? So why does he only go for it now? I just, I do not understand. Would this not A, be a valuable piece of tech for him to salvage from you? And B, would it not be valuable for him to remove this from you so you couldn't come fight him in the future? Man, 
Simubot is the most absolutely ballistically stupid AI I've ever seen. Uh, absolutely stupidest AI I've ever seen. Uh, stupidest AI I've ever seen. Now, Atlas gets knocked out, and Smith tries to use a magic defibrillator. I don't even know where the defibrillator comes from. It's seemingly, like, invisible. Maybe I missed it. Whatever. He tries to use a magic defibrillator on her, and uh, Simu comes closer, but Smith activates the Deus Ex chest cannon. The Chekhov's chest cannon. <laughs> Apparently this knocks out Simubot, but only for a second. And uh, Simu comes back and destroys the fusion core in the mech. Atlas moves from her spot and leaves her chess piece on the floor, surprise attacking Simu from behind. Simu says he was humanity's last hope. No, you were going to ignite the entire earth into a giant flaming ball of fire that will infinitely burn itself and eat all the oxygen. You were There was no hope for humanity with you. I know you wanted to rebuild them, but you can't rebuild Earth if the atmosphere is burned. I'm sorry, bro. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You're, you're, you were no hope for nobody, okay? And then she says, Smith is the better version of you. I agree. I like Smith, you know? Cool guy. Now, why did they decide to all of a sudden give helpful AI robots force powers and arm blades? This is just a question I had at, towards the end of the film. You know, these are supposed to be like house... Again, she at one point... Uh, at one point in the beginning of the film, she calls Casca a house bot. Why do house bots have force powers, arm blades, and buzz saws spitting out of their throats? Man, you can't make this up. Now, she uses a regular metal pole to kill him here, okay? A regular metal pole. Apparently, that's all they need to die. What? Simu says she needs to bring him in. She says she only needs the CPU, okay? So after she's done monologuing and she defeated Simu, she drops her chest piece next to him. She's moved on. Get it? M moved? Moved on? Okay. Smith's fusion power core is now conveniently at 1%, of course, because it's the end of the uh, plot, the end of the film. So, you know, it's got to line up perfectly like everything else does. Deus Ex Battery. And uh, he disables his powers so that she can get more oxygen. I'm not sure how battery power translates into oxygen generation. Not sure how this works, but I guess it does. Anyways, she finally admits that she likes cake and pie. Great callback. You know, just because you make callbacks, that means your script is, uh, you know, Oscar worthy right there. The more callbacks, the more Oscars you win. But I heard. And uh, she also hates everyone. I don't actually like. She says, people always disappoint, but not you. He's not a person. Anyways, she now tells him everything she likes in a sentimental final moment. And most of all, she loves a good cup of coffee. Cool. He gives her a cake pop now for the road. Something special for the road. And shuts the fuck down. Smith is honestly, you know, rest in peace. Peace to the fallen. He's the best character in the goddamn movie. Love that guy. I'm going to miss him. Atlas says, Peace to the Fallen, of course. And uh, at least this movie knows how to do callbacks, like I said. Multiple callbacks, but they don't make this film any better. They actually stand out and make this film look dumb. Anyways, Atlas looks into the sunset now as rangers arrive at the perfect time. Yay, Deus Ex Rangers. Yay, movie. Yay, plot. Everything's good now. She gets rescued by another ship, of course. Perfect timing. Um, now we cut to her back at home. <laughs> Jesus, I love JLo. Now, Mark Strong knocks on the door. He talks about mapping Harlan's CPU. He brings the remains of her arc, and there's the planty inside of it. The, the little flower, the space flower she named she, uh, when she was uh, about to enter the second act. Uh or whatever. Yeah, Planty's back, okay? So again, call back. Great, Oscar winning. Oscar winning script. She's now an ARC Ranger officially, even though she failed her four tests and uh, she almost got everybody killed on a mission. Um, yeah, she's officially an ARC Ranger now with a brand new ARC mech, but it's actually Smith. He's back. Smith is back, you know, because he's an AI, you can just put him back in the suit. So he's back. And I guess she's completed her ARC. And that's the film, ladies and gentlemen. She's completed her ARC. Oscar winning. So clever. So clever. And I've just recorded a one hour and 55 minute and 12, 13, 14, 15 second oh, breakdown scene by scene. I don't know. On autistic levels, I suffered for this. I'm going to have to go edit it now. I hope you're watching. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Now, guys, I want to address the comment section real quick. I love you guys 3000. I may have made mistakes. I'm not an AI. I'm only human. So forgive me here and there. I'm 98.5% certain that, uh, <laughs> there's a callback right there. <laughs> uh, that I got most of this shit correct. And that this is an absolutely dumb movie. And according to the Rotten Tomatoes ratings and elsewhere across YouTube lands, everybody seems to hate this piece of shit. So I'm sorry to the writers for taking a, uh, a, a big dump on your pile of dump. I'm just adding fuel to the flame, I guess. But I really want to say, uh, I apologize. I, I really want to give my apologies sincerely to the production designers, the artists, the CGI people, and, um, 
the set, the crew, the grips. I love you guys for making movies. And um, my goal is not to make you feel bad about making this movie. My goal is just to expose bad movies at their core when it comes to the foundations in the writing, the characters, the world building, the plot logic, and the presentation overall. This film looked cool. There was some really good moments with CGI. There was some good acting here and there. Um, for the most part, it was just a poor script and a poor story by the numbers. And also the numbers didn't add up. So I'm sorry to the writers, but all this I feel in my heart and I hope you can forgive me for critiquing your film. That's all I got to say. This has been Stark Cinema, a cinema autopsy, autopsy of cinema. I don't know what I'm going to call this, a breakdown of sorts. I love you guys. 3, Let me know in the comments what movie you want to do next. I might be bringing out some old Mad Max uh, breakdowns as well as some Deadpool 1 and 2 breakdowns leading up to the release. So stay tuned for that. Hit the like, comment, and subscribe. I love you 3000. I will see you on the next video.